You're listening to the Abolitionists Roundtable, patriotic black American conservative all access radio, with your hosts, Dell, Phil, and Janice. They're leading the charge in advancing the conservative revolution. Join the conversation at 734 822 1600. All right, thank you, folks. One of the fastest hours in radio. I mean, we got so much that uh, we need to talk about. It's so many uh, issues, and 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 again, the the Democrats have uh, have created all the the problems, but we haven't seen uh, from uh, from the, the the from the other side where. Where, where it's the laboratory of ideas. We haven't seen the Republicans on that other side come up with, 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 with some solutions, you know, you know, not just being in opposition of, of Obama, but coming up with real solutions. We see in the states, well, of course, we know in the states, that's where real solutions are. are, uh, are they, they come up with real solutions, and we want the people that's in the high and highest positions in, in our federal government to adopt some of those positions and minimize uh, some of these regulations and unleash unleash the creativity of the American spirit. I'm telling you, it, this next you know era that we live in, we should create more millionaires uh, than ever before. And and that's what I want. It, it, the more people that that become millionaires and billionaires in this in this era, are are these are more people that could have that can create opportunities for everyone to lift themselves out of wherever they at. But you know the truth of the matter at. is, Del. True wealth is of mm -hmm. the soul. Mm -hmm. So you know I consider myself a very wealthy woman. I just don't have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not a matter of being millionaires and billionaires. Maybe millionaires and billionaires in spirit. Millionaires and billionaires in the spirit of working hard for what you get, taking responsibility for what you do, and understanding that the law is not supposed to take you from cradle to grave and support you. And you can't complain because you're not getting your quote-unquote fair share if you don't want to do anything to help our society grow. Well, there are people out there that uh, that 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 have ideas, um, and and they can create great opportunities for a lot of people. Absolutely. Really. I mean, just think about it. it. Was a guy that created something called Facebook in his garage, and uh, somebody that created the, you know these cell phones and and uh, even I mean, Uber and Uber. Well, what a great just concept! Just about that right there. That was the. We talking about when I was a kid. We call this with Uber. We call Uber a jitney service. It okay. Was, when I was a kid, I used to run down. I mean, Phil talked about this. I would run on a Saturday and to the grocery store. And it was a guy that was at the grocery store. If I um, uh, if I uh, identified somebody that needed a ride. He would give me a quarter. He'd give me fifty cent. We used to call jitney. it. Uh -huh. We used to call it hitchhiking. We'd put, our, <laughs> we'd stand on the side of the road, and put our thumbs out, and somebody'd stop and pick us up oh, okay. and take well, us where we different. wanted to go. What well, that's the that? same concept. Well, it's not the same. Well, well it's jitney, the same. Well, because it, it was wasn't a safer a environment. Person. Yeah, that that wasn't too safe right there. Uh, what I mean by jitney is it was it was a guy that 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 was a regular at this grocery store. And and I can tell him, ma'am, Mr. John is uh, here. To take you home, uh, Mr. John. Uh, uh, come and give me a quarter. He came every week to the grocery store, and this was his way of uh, making making a little extra cash. Uh, and he was a little bit cheaper than taking a cab. And so yeah. that was it. Was called a jitney service at that time. And so, but yeah, you're right. Uber created something. He's seen a need. He didn't go out and reinvent the the wheel. He didn't right. create something new. He's seen that there was a need in that industry, and all he did was just reform the idea yep. of the cab service. Yep. And wow, what a what a genius uh, philosophy, a uh, business philosophy that he's created that has created uh, 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 quadrillions of jobs for people, not just here in the United States, all over the world. Right. This is this concept. American ingenuity, absolutely mm -hmm. to yeah, be right. celebrated. So, all right, so well, Mayor, we have uh, Allison. 
uh, from Vote Biblically. She has an announcement for us, and we want to let her. Good morning, Allison. We want to let you make your announcement. You have some great news for us. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Um, good, morning. good morning, Janice. Good morning, Del. Hi. Um, yeah, we're really excited. Um, Vote Biblically is, um, has put up their first billboard on I-94 in Grand River. And uh, we are meeting today at 1 o'clock um, right in front of the Curacao Laundry Mat to pray and really pray for the kickoff that these billboards go across the nation. That's a wonderful uh, idea that you have, Allison. And I might mention, Allison is one of the ladies of the round table. <laughs> so, yay! yay. So uh, we're going to have an opportunity to have the ladies, in fact, host a couple of radio shows in the near future. Uh, but mm -hmm. that Vote Biblically billboard is so attractive. I want everybody to go to your website, votebiblically.com. Yes. Simple as that, yes. votebiblically.com. The, the, mm -hmm. the mission is in the name. And it's yes. a lovely billboard. Um, uh, unfortunately, I've got an appointment to be in a parliamentary procedures class. I want to learn about par parliamentary procedures, and that was already set in motion before I found out about your, um, uh, what is it, grand opening or grand uh, kickoff. kickoff. Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a kickoff for, you know, the Christians to get together and to really pr pray about our nation, about our leaders, about the message, about voting biblically. Why don't you give that um, location again, Allison? Um, it's I-94 in Grand River. That's in so Detroit. It's right off the expressway. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And give us that website one more time so our, uh, our listeners, they can go to that website and they can probably find out more information about that location uh, where you're going to be at today at, at 1 o'clock. Okay. Um, VoteBiblically.com. And I want to spell biblically for you, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's V O T E B I B L I C A L L Y dot com. Okay. Wonderful. All right. Well, Allison, we, we look forward. Unfortunately, I have a uh, seven year old that has a uh, drama class today. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I'm not going to be able to make it, but absolutely, uh, you, you know, in my time that uh, I, I pray, uh, absolutely, I'm, y y your organization is going to be in my prayers, and you personally, too. Oh, praise God. Yeah. So I want to thank you again for getting us uh, with us this morning, and I'll be listening to uh, you and the ladies. I uh, heard y'all going to be coming up, uh, have, a, have a few shows scheduled for uh, coming up real soon. Yes. We're looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, Thank you, Allison. Um, thank you, and uh, God bless you guys. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. We have Mr. Mr. Mike from Ann Arbor. Good morning, Mike. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, Dell and Janice. Good morning, Mike. I was listening to your conversation yeah. a little bit about Donald Trump, and I just want to say one thing. I'm a yes. big Trump supporter. Okay. I have supported him from the get-go. And I will continue to support him no matter what. I think the guy is basically the fresh air in the political scene in the, in the United States that we've needed for a long, long time. And just stop and think if Donald Trump wasn't in this race, we would have ended up with Jeb Bush on the Republican side. That's right. So, you know, when you hear the criticism of, of uh, Donald Trump, you have to remember one thing. His supposed, quote-unquote, whining about the process, he has just basically... You know, the old thing, uh, sunlight uh, uh, cures a disease. He has basically opened up the Republican Party to see the, 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 the underhanded dealing and wheeling and dealing that the Republicans have done for a long time. And Bernie Sanders, by the way, is doing the same thing with the Democratic Party. That's right. So both parties are being exposed for what they are. Insiders, uh, basically all they're for is their own pocketbooks. And the reason that they are so anti-Trump is because they know once Trump gets in, they're they're finished. Their influence is done. And people like McConnell and please do not give me Paul Ryan. Right. I do not want to see Paul Ryan. No, I don't either. I, know, I agree with everything yeah. you've said, yeah, Mike, Paul and that's why Ryan. I've been a supporter since get go too. But I can tell you one thing as far as as far as uh, Mr. Cruz is concerned. Uh, Mr. Cruz is very sly. He is very 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 crafty. He loves to lift up the Bible. You know, I'm not looking for a pastor. I'm not looking for a priest. I'm not looking for a holy man. What I'm looking for is a man that will basically put this country back on its track. And the, the most important things are immigration, 
the economy, and our national defense. And, and treatment of our vets. Treatment of our vets is another big issue Amen. that Donald Trump focuses on a great deal. And you know what? I'm not looking for anybody who's going to solve all the problems of our country. I'm looking for Donald Trump to bust open this system wide open so that we can start voting biblically, so that we can start instilling honorable men into offices from the lowest level all the way up to the top, because I do believe it starts at the grassroots. And also one other thing. You mentioned the vets. I heard what Donald said yesterday, and what I when when he made the remark that if our if our VAs cannot service our veterans, then I will make sure that every hospital they have opportunities to be serviced at private hospitals with the best of care. These men have given their all yep. in defense of freedom. They have given everything you can possibly give, and to be treated worse than animals, some in some cases, and being allowed to die because we just have a procedure in the, in, in the VA that is totally archaic. Donald Trump, I think, basically, if he doesn't get in and the regular politicians get in, God forbid if it's Hillary, yeah. God forbid it really if it's Bernie, God. Uh, basically, and if, and if Cruz is successful and gets in, then we just have the regular apparatchiks of the Republican Party and everything goes the way it's always been. Yep. You notice one thing. When Donald Trump came in, he basically overturned the entire system. He has shown the American people that, yes, a businessman, a regular citizen, somebody who is not in politics, can get into politics and can make a difference. And that's the reason I'm for Donald Trump. And frankly, uh, if it's Cruz, with what he's done lately, you know, lying and cheating, Ted, that's not false either. If you take a look back and really look at it, a lying and cheating, Chad, uh, Ted, is exactly what the guy's been. Oh, right. Right. It's true, Mike. Right, Mike. You're making some great points. All okay, right, guys. Mike. But, but again, we, we need, we need uh, Ted, and we need his supporters, too. We need his supporters. So, and, and that's all I'm saying is that, uh, uh, is that uh, uh, at the end of the day, we need his supporters. We, we need some of the people that voted for, for Ted Cruz also. So we don't want to have them so offended that they don't want to uh, participate in the process also.